Today on Vintage Camera Digest, we're going to look at how budget-friendly medium format films, specifically Arista EDU and the new Kentmere Pan 100, stack up against the pricier Kodak T-Max. So stick around for those results. If you're just getting into film photography, there's a discovery you've probably made. Film is not cheap. And for whatever reason you choose to pursue film photography, whether as an option for your photo business or just doing it for fun, there is a certain financial commitment you're going to be making. Film prices have risen dramatically over the last several years, and there aren't nearly as many purchasing options as there were back when film was king. And if you're shooting medium format, you're looking at prices around $10 per roll. Personally, I'm always looking for ways to reduce my film costs while getting results that keep me inspired and motivated to shoot all these wonderful film cameras. One popular budget film that has been around quite a while now is the Arista EDU brand. You can pick up a 120 roll for about $6 US. I've used this film in the past, and honestly, I don't care for it. It has a bit too much contrast for my liking and is just hard for me to get the results I want. So, to me, it was worth paying twice as much for a film that would give me pleasing results, especially since the effort required for film photography is not insignificant. However, a budget film that I did enjoy shooting was Ultrafine Extreme 100. I loved that film, but sadly, it hasn't been available for about a year now, and I doubt we'll ever see it back on the market. Ultrafine Extreme, as well as the Arista, are rebranded films from other manufacturers. Photo Warehouse sold the Ultrafine as its house brand, but they never revealed exactly what film it was they were rebranding. All we know is that it wasn't produced in the USA. On the box of Arista EDU, it says, Made in the Czech Republic which pretty much points to it being rebranded Fomapan. But I haven't gone to the trouble of shooting any Foma to test this. But in December of last year, 2022, Harman Technology, the folks that produce Ilford films in the UK, gave the entire world a Christmas gift by offering their budget film, Kentmere, in 120 size for the first time ever. Previously, it had only been available in 35 millimeter. And they're marketing this 120 film for about five and a half US dollars per roll. Now, I have to be honest again, I didn't expect much out of this new Kent mirror. Several years ago, I bought a 100 foot roll of the 35 millimeter version and I thought it was okay. But anyway, I picked up a few rolls of the new Kent mirror 120 and was surprised at how much I liked it. So I thought, wouldn't it be a great idea to compare these two budget films Kentmere 100 and Arista EDU 100 to my favorite non-budget film, Kodak T-Max 100. So that's what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to use my Bronica S2A and three separate film backs. Camera, film, film, and film. And I'm also going to use a tripod. So this should minimize the variables in shooting since the camera, shutters, f-stops, and lenses will all be identical from roll to roll. And the tripod will ensure that the composition and framing will be the same. The only difference will be the film. We'll be comparing apples to apples. So the questions I want to answer are, is Arista EDU as bad as I really think it is? Is Kodak T-Max really as good as I think it is? And how does the new Kent mirror stack up against these two? So let's go shoot. So I've got three rolls of film to compare. We've got the Arista EDU 100. We have the new Kent mirror Pan 100. And my favorite of all time, T-Max 100. I'm gonna shoot all three of them in exactly the same spot, same setting, same camera, and see what the differences are. So, in search of the first shot, I spy a canoe over on the other side. Let's head over there. All right, so I'm going to use my Minolta spot meter. I'm gonna shoot the highlights and I'm gonna shoot the shadows 
and it's going to calculate an exposure that will give me both of those in decent range. So I'm measuring F11 at 1 60th of a second. All right, there's my highlight and let's put my shadow in. All right, that was at F4 average. So my spot meter is giving me a 5.6 and a half at 1 60th of a second. So first shot is the Arista 100. Check the depth of field here. Dark slide is out. Shot one. And that was the air stuff. All right, dark slide in, let's swap backs. Next we'll go with the Kent Mirror 100. I shot the 35 millimeter version of this before and I mean it was okay but it didn't I mean it just didn't wow me that much but what I have shot on the very few rolls that I was able to get a hold of to begin with when this was released I did like I thought that it was a good range of tones um, yeah, I was impressed. So we'll see how it stacks up against the T Max. All right, T Max is next. Dark slide out. Confirm focus again. All right, and T Max, here we go. So I didn't have to move far to find another spot. I got the bark here sort of peeled away from the trees. Got some good detail, got some direct sun coming in to highlight some of this. Uh, so it will be another good uh, example of dynamic range of this film. So I've got the T-Max in here still from the last shot. I'm gonna meter this again with the spot meter, taking a reading from the shadow area and the highlight. And most of this is fairly evenly lit, except for that little spot there in the background. All right, F4 at 1 60th of a second. All right, first shot is with T-Max. I'm hoping to find a stream with maybe a little waterfall. I've seen some photos that that kind of thing is out here, but this is my first time here, even though I only live five or six miles away. So maybe I'll be able to find that, we'll see. Still a beautiful place, beautiful day for a walk. Temperatures in the low 70s, nice. All right, so this wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but it is picturesque, and I do believe I can get at least a couple of shots out of this. It's midday, so the lighting is not the best. But we'll make what we can of it. I just realized that I didn't hit record on the last shot that I did. So that's unfortunate, but uh, I'm recording now. Got a nice shot lined up, got it metered, and T-Max is first. 1 60th of a second at F4.5.
All right, I'm gonna continue down this trail because this is where I wanna be and uh, see what else we can get. Okay, so I've been looking for something that is in the direct sun. There's a lot of nice stuff down that way in the shade down in the, where the creek flows through and the swampiness where we just were. Lots of good shots, but I really need higher speed film for that. Um, Cause I was getting, you know, pretty wide open apertures, which is fine. Um, but I'm looking for something with a lot of sun and I think this is it. I don't know how interesting it is, but it's gonna, I think it'll be a good test for the film one way or the other. All right, first up we have the Arista. Dark slide out. Framed up and ready to go. Kent mirror pan 100 up next. And we'll finish up this shot with T-Max. Also, sort of like this foliage we have here. I think I may go for a shallower depth of field for this one. So let's put the shutter speed at 1 500th of a second. I have no idea how many shots we have on these rolls because it seems like a lot because I'm doing three of everything. Uh, we are at shot number seven only. All right, anyway. I decided to move venues. So I'm now down in Roopville, Georgia, which was just about 15 miles away. Uh, I knew they had this piece of equipment out here resting. We got a lot of direct sun coming in at a pretty oblique angle. So hopefully that will give us some nice shadow detail, uh, some surface detail. Let's look for another shot right around here. All right, 250 at 5.6 is it. This is the Arista. All right, this is the T-Max. So I screwed every bit of that up. Didn't change my shutter speed. All right, let's do it again. This time the correct shutter speed, 1 60th at 5.6. Well, I was hoping not to waste any frames today. Oh, I can't believe I did that.
three rolls of film shot exactly the same way, even the mistakes. Now there was one additional variable that I had to deal with in this test, the processing. And I wanted to minimize any differences that would be due to my sloppiness when it came to developing. So I chose to use freshly mixed D76 at a one to three dilution. I chose the one to three dilution since this would make the developing times longer and give me a more acceptable margin of error. And I based the developing times on information that was recommended by the manufacturer. Both the Kodak and Arista films were processed for 17 minutes with one minute of agitation at the beginning and 10 seconds of agitation every minute thereafter. The Kent mirror was processed the same way except the developing time was 21 minutes. And I double and triple checked these times to make sure I didn't screw that part up. And the results are quite eye-opening. The very first thing I noticed was the density of the Kent mirror. Compared to the other two films, it looks overdeveloped or overexposed. So I went back and checked the recommended developing time, making sure I processed it correctly with one to three dilution of D76 at the ISO rating of 100, confirmed. The second thing I noticed is that the Arista has a thinner base and curls easily, which makes it harder to handle and scan. But the Arista negatives look fine, as well as the Kodak negatives, no surprise there. So let's take a look at the shot side by side. These were all scanned with a DSLR setup. I determined the camera exposure for the first shot in the roll using the histogram so that the image data was more or less in the middle range and shot the entire roll at that exposure. The only adjustments I've made to the scans were to set the black point based on the clear negative base. I did this in Photoshop using curves. So let's take a look at photo number one. Again, these are with no adjustments other than setting the black point based on the clear negative base. The Arista has more inherent contrast than the T-Max, and the Kent mirror is lighter due to the density of that negative. Knowing what I did about the Arista's contrast before this test, I wasn't really surprised at this result. What did surprise me is that I sort of prefer this Arista shot over the T-Max because of the contrast. Test shot number two also shows me the same thing that I'm surprised that I like the Arista shot better than the other two. Of course, I can adjust curves on the T-Max and Kent mirror to improve their contrast and exposure, but straight out of the camera, the Arista looks the best to me. And shot number three, which is an overly contrasty scene to begin with, and I chose it to see how each film could handle the dynamic range. The shadow areas all look fine with good detail, as well as the highlight areas. The T-Max in the middle shows more detail in the highlights than the Arista because of the lower contrast. You can really see that in this tree right here. Shot number four shows us about the same thing since there wasn't much difference in the subject. The Arista has good contrast, the T-Max is a bit low, and the Kent mirror looks overexposed. And I think this is going to be a recurring theme in the shots that follow. Shot number five is another shot I chose because of the wide dynamic range of the subject. The fallen tree was in direct sun and there were deep shadows in the background. I think this one could have been exposed better because I prefer the Kent mirror on the right in this one since the scene could have used a bit more exposure. Shot number six looks a little better even though it's just a different composition of the same spot. For this one, I think the T-Max in the middle handles the dynamic range a little better. There's a bit more detail in the shadows in the background. Number seven is a familiar story. Contrast on the Arista film looks pretty good as is. The T-Max could benefit from a slight contrast boost and the Kent mirror could use less exposure. Moving on to shot number eight. The same as most of the others, Arista has good contrast, T-Max could use a boost, and Kent mirror could use less exposure. Shot number nine. Believe it or not, the same. And at this point, I'm reevaluating my prejudice against the Arista EDU film. But I think I know why I'm feeling this way, and I'll explain it at the end. Shot number 10, if you recall, is the one where I made the exposure error and accidentally underexposed the shot by two stops, which is really a good thing because now we can see if the Kent mirror really does benefit from less exposure. And I think it does. Maybe not two stops worth, but perhaps one stop. Here the Kent mirror is more in line with what I would expect with overall tones, even though it might be a bit too much contrast. But still, 
I'm glad we got to see how these films handle underexposure. None are terrible, and I think I could get all of them to work with some curves adjustments. Shot number 11 is the same subject with the corrected exposure, or at least the exposure I meant it to be. It's a super contrasty shot, and I didn't have any idea how the films would handle it. That being said, I prefer the T-Max shot due to the lower inherent contrast, and I think the Kent mirror clearly shows it has too much exposure. For the last shot, here we have a lot of mid-tones with more or less even lighting. I think the Arista looks okay as well as the T-Max, though each could use a slight boost in contrast. The Kent mirror, as usual, a bit overexposed. Now, here's a version of that final shot where I've edited each of the frames individually to correct for exposure and contrast using the curves in Photoshop. This brings the Kent mirror in line as far as the exposure goes. But I think we have the same general results as all before. Arista with a decent inherent contrast, T-Max with less of it, and when we adjust the Kent mirror to match the others, it looks pretty good. Slightly more contrast than the T-Max, but less ruddy mid-tones than the Arista. I also went back and did the same adjustments to the previous shot. The T-Max and Kent mirror look pretty good with good detail in this shadow area. The Arista shadows lose detail here. Likewise, I did the same thing for the first shot with the canoe. The mid-tones of the Arista look slightly grungy here, while the T-Max could use still a bit of contrast. The Kent mirror looks pretty good across the board here. Now I'll go ahead and say this, none of these differences are extreme, some are very, very subtle, and the edits I've done here are only my interpretation. In reality, I think any of these three shots would be totally acceptable with very minor tweaks. And I will admit that straight out of the camera, I think the Arista looks best. And I can't believe I'm actually saying that. But here's why I think that is. These were all developed in a 1 to 3 dilution of D76, and that is not what I usually use. I usually will use a 1 to 1, but the 1 to 3 dilution has decreased the overall contrast of each film relative to what I usually get. Therefore, the Arista's inherent contrast looks good when developed with a 1 to 3 dilution, since it's less than it would be at a 1 to 1, which is all I've ever used. With the T-Max, developed in a 1 to 3 solution, though, could use more contrast, in my opinion. So what have I learned from this test? One, I don't hate Arista EDU 100, as long as I develop it in a D76 1 to 3 solution. However, it does have a thin base and is prone to curling, and it makes it a royal pain to load onto a film roll in the dark. Two, I need to continue to develop my T-Max in a 1 to 1 solution of D76 to get the contrast I'm used to. 3. Kent Mirror Pan 100 may actually be closer to a 200 ISO film. After doing this test, I was thinking that maybe I did something wrong with the development time. So I shot and processed another test roll at 100 ISO and developed it again with the 1 to 3 solution, and I got the exact same density in the negatives. So the next test will be me shooting some of it at ISO 200 and comparing those results. Now we can't do a comparison test without mentioning grain, and it's no surprise here that T-Max has the least apparent grain by a long shot. But of course that's because it's a different type of grain altogether and really isn't fair to the others which have a more traditional grain structure. In this case, I think the grain of the Arista and Kent mirror is almost the same, with maybe a slight nod to the Arista and having just a bit less than the Kent mirror, but it's probably really too close to call. So, there we have it. Probably. I mean, I really tried to minimize the variables as much as possible, but I'm sure there was still room for errors in my methodology. So what do you think of the Kent Mirror Pan Film, or Arista EDU? I've not shot any of the Kent Mirror 400 yet, but I just got five rolls in, so I'll be testing that soon. Maybe I will do a 400 speed shootout with the Arista, the Kent Mirror, and Kodak Tri-X instead of the T-Max since the Tri-X has the more traditional grain structure. Anyway, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your comments about any of these films, or film photography, or cameras in general. And if you enjoyed this episode, please click the thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you won't miss any of the great episodes that I'll have coming up. Also, you can visit the Vintage Camera Digest website for tons of more information on vintage cameras. I will put the link down in the description. So, just remember, you miss all the shots you don't take. So load that film camera up and get shooting. And thanks for doing your part to keep film alive.